tips to improve the tension that you use when you knit that can help give you relief from knitting pain are as follows. Now we're going to want to do whatever we can to control the stitches and relax your grip on the needles and the yarn. So one way that you can do that right now is to look at the way that you're tensioning the yarn in your fingers, okay? And every time you make a stitch you want to first of all feel like you're in control of the yarn. So whatever tensioning system you use, I do over, under, over, under. You can, you know, you can wrap a few times around your pinky needle and then go over and I'll give you tips for American style as well, but this works and this one works for American style. Make sure that you feel like you have control over that yarn so that when you're knitting you don't do something like this where all of a sudden your fingers are getting really really close with each stitch they're getting closer and closer to your needle tips right here my fingers getting closer and closer because I'm not actually feeding enough yarn onto the right hand needle with every stitch right and it's it's possible that I'm holding on really tight with my yarn because I don't feel like I have control so make sure that whatever you do like you're able to stop and start the flow of yarn when you want to in your hands. Now it can be hard if you have arthritis, if you have kind of swollen knuckles, um, if you're wearing a, a big old diamond ring that could get in the way, but um, you know weave the yarn in around, you can weave it around your hand like this, you know, to feel like you have greater control. Again, I, I would definitely suggest this over under over under method because um, it gives you a few fingers with which to stop the flow of yarn. So if you feel like you're able to start and stop the flow of yarn, next time when you're doing the stitches, with every single stitch, make sure that you push the stitch all the way on to the right hand needle. Like this, okay? When you're making the stitch, and I'll, I'll show you American style as well. You're making the stitch, instead of finishing right here and continuing on, make sure you push it down, and as you push it down, you're going to feed the yarn through your needles. And I'll show you what that looks like, American style. So we do over, under, over, under with the tensioning. Now push the stitches on the left hand needle up to the tip as you become as you get ready to knit them. Okay, we don't want to leave them down here because this is another this is going to be another way that it's going to be very hard for you to knit into and the harder things are to knit into the more you're going to be straining and the more you're going to be sore if you do it for hours and hours and hours the same way, right? So we're going to you can use your fingers, you can push sorry, <laughs> I got some fuzzy yarn here. You can push the stitches up to the tips of your needles. Not probably not off the tips, that's not as helpful. So you push them up to the tip of the left hand needle and when you insert your right hand needle and knit your stitch, the whole movement that you do you're going to be letting the yarn flow and then in the very end of the movement where you take the stitch off and put it on the right hand needle, you're going to push it down like this and let the yarn continue to flow. So the yarn is flowing the entire time here. See with the yarn feeding, 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 we've got control of it here, not 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 pulling too tight of course because that'll make the stitch really really tight, okay, but just controlling it, okay, so it's no longer feeding, right, and then when we pull the new stitch through, see that yarn feeding again, that yarn needs to feed through to make room for that new stitch, okay, and these stitches should be able to slide up and down on these needles, if, if, if they're too tight like this they're not going to slide, and if they are too tight your hands are going to get sore, and if you do it for a long time that way you can get even some repetitive injuries from just straining so hard. Okay, so what have we learned so far? We need control of the yarn and we need control of where the stitches are. So what you can do, the best things that you can use for control are these fingertips. Okay, see how I'm I'm gonna be touching the stitches, I'm gonna be I'm holding on to the needles, I'm touching the, the tips of the needles, so my hands are everywhere and I suggest that you do the same. You can use your finger uh, tip to help you push. Obviously if the needles are sharp that's not gonna be comfortable and that sometimes is the case. Um, but you can you can use your fingers to guide you so that you know where everything is so you can see you want to touch the stitches as you bring them up to the tip of the left hand needle and you can even use your thumb to scoop them down onto the right hand needle okay so there's not as much uh, forcing and controlling or any really going on with the yarn you're not using your tension on the working yarn to manipulate the stitch at all you're not you're not holding the the stitch in place by tightening it if that makes sense you're gonna hold if you want to hold the stitch in place use your fingers okay so that it can slide really easily all right, so what else can we do? You, if you feel like you've got good control over your stitches and that it's okay to touch the stitches, and, and, if, you, and if you don't feel like it's okay to touch the stitches, this is what you're going to notice yourself doing. You're going to be knitting like this and like this, something like that, where you, you're just holding on to the needles, but you don't really want to touch your stitches, right? My goodness, you're going to be 
uh, coming all the way down here to hold your needle and look how tight that stitch is going to come out. I, I know you probably know what I'm talking about. You've Either you've done this or you've seen someone doing it, right? Where, where you see that working on under a lot of tension right there, right? Another issue is, let's say you don't feel confident in, on see how to work to get that stitch on there. If you don't feel confident in your grip, maybe you're just letting the, the yarn hang down like that and you're not even holding on to it with a consistent tension at all and you're like concentrating and this is you know common for beginners you're concentrating on the stitch you pick up the yarn you make the stitch you hang on to it for dear life right there you make the stitch and you move it off and then you let go again so you're picking it up and letting it go and picking it up and letting it go and that's going to lead to a really inconsistent tension and that's going to be not as fun to knit with so the better you can control the yarn tension with your hands and the stitches and their location with your fingers, the more your hands are going to be able to relax and the more you're going to be able to knit pain-free for hours and hours. All right, so, but I have more tips for you. Those are just the basic, those are just basic good, uh, you know, good manners or, you know, good tension best practices for when you're knitting. Those are the basics. So some more tips I have for you. Make sure that your yarn ball, that you've got lots and lots of yarn, like extra yarn pulled out of your yarn ball. You don't want your yarn ball hanging down like I have mine here and it's not very heavy. It's just a little bobbin. Whoops, there we go. It unravels really easily, which what you, is what you want. But even a little bobbin like this can weigh you down. All right, it can pull on your knitting unconsciously and you're sort of working against it every time. So every time you feel a little, a little tug here, a little nudge that that your yarn ball is kind of close to your fingers and when I mean close I mean like two or three arm lengths away um, you're gonna be sort of fighting against that and we don't want that because that's gonna increase the tension in your hands and, and we can't afford to do that we want you to knit for hours and hours without pain okay so every time you, you feel that go ahead and uh, take your move your hand out like slide it down like this in order to sort of pull out more yarn out of your yarn ball is what you're gonna be doing you're gonna be moving the moving the yarn ball sort of down and, and opening it up so if you I usually have three arms lengths and if I don't have at least three arms lengths I can feel it and it bothers me I feel like it's pulling on my on my hand so you got lots and lots of slack yarn coming off of the ball of yarn alright so that is one good tip one of the things that it's important to think about is what's going on in your mind as you're knitting and what are you trying to accomplish, if anything, as you're knitting. Um, apart from physical techniques like the ones I showed you, or ideas about switching to maybe continental style, or sitting up straighter, and different things that you could change but aren't really going to make a big difference right in the moment because they, they take a while to accomplish, um, I want to focus on things you can do right now to minimize the tension that your hands are under while you're knitting. And one of them would be your mental attitude. When you try to knit fast, if you are thinking, let me see how fast I can go, and you know that may not apply to everybody, but if you're thinking how fast can you go, you're going to automatically start to tense up, you're going to be thinking about not making mistakes, you'll start to make more mistakes, and you're, start, you're going to definitely hold your yarn tighter, just like I was showing you just now. I don't know if you notice that, but you can, if you see, if you see the yarn, instead of being fluffy like this, if you see it start to collapse and become a smaller diameter or make like a dip in your skin, you know you're holding on to it too tight. You're trying to control it too much, okay? So thinking about trying to knit fast is actually one of the things that can end up really shooting you in the foot. And also, it's not as enjoyable. You're like, how fast can I get to the end of the row? And this often happens when you're an intermediate knitter and you're starting to feel really proud of how well you're doing. And, and you think, or you see your sweater that your blanket that you're knitting and you think, you know, I just want to get, you know, 10 more inches done or one more inch done. And you, you, you know, set targets for yourself and you have a goal in mind as you knit. And it doesn't end up being enjoyable. You can you, you might notice changes in the stitch tension, and obviously what we talked about, you're definitely not going to be on your way to avoiding any hand pain at all. You're going to exacerbate it. So enjoy every movement. Concentrate on making every movement uh, feel good and not hurt. <laughs> and... Um, and the knitting's going to take care of itself. You know, the blanket's going to finish itself. The sweater's going to take care of itself. All you have to do is make sure that each stitch feels good for you and that you're doing it in a way that is sustainable. Because if one stitch doesn't feel good, you know, 10,000 stitches are not going to feel much better. So I've gotten to, I don't have much slack in my yarn now, so i got to pull some out because it's going to make me tense. So the mental attitude of making each stitch enjoyable, sustainable, you know, just think to yourself, could I keep this up for a while? Could I keep this up? Or 
you know, do I maybe need a break? But a lot of other websites out there talk about taking breaks, wearing a brace, changing your style of knitting, changing how you sit, and you can do all of those things, but working on the tension and the way that you hold your yarn and the way that you think about your knitting is actually gonna make a huge difference. And before I wrap up, I wanna give one more tip, which is the tools that you use. Right here I'm using Signature Needle Arts Stiletto Tip Single Point Needles. So I'm using really, really wonderful needles, probably the best that money can buy, and it's because it makes a difference in my knitting. So I recommend that you get slippery, wonderful needles that you really enjoy if you can afford it. Um, for me, it's you know non-negotiable because I got these videos and they've got to be fabulous for you. But each stitch is really important to me. So use good tools because they're going to let your stitches slide better. Everything's going to work better. You're not going to be fighting against any sort of microscopic burrs or, or roughness in your needles. And you are going to be enjoying your knitting more and that's going to make your tension better and it's just going to melt out of your hands and you're going to be caring for your hands and treasuring those wrists and those tendons and those knuckles uh, so that you can continue knitting for a long, long time and you don't, uh, and you don't put your health of your hands in danger just so that you can enjoy your favorite hobby. All right, good luck and take care of those hands. Trying to learn and master knitting on your own is frustrating. That's why I created Knitting Superstar University, a video knitting school that teaches you everything you need to know to knit any project with confidence. Get instant access today at knitfreedom.com.